Okay, so I think this is going to be an interesting presentation. Uh, Dr. Tejas Shastri yep. is the uh, chief data scientist mm -hmm. for Green Key Technologies, which is a uh, local company that started off mostly in the financial services mm -hmm. uh, space, has recently been expanding into emergency communications, mm -hmm. and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, speech recognition and machine learning uh, and uh, what his team is doing there. So this will be interesting, I think. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Uh, my name is Sejah Shastri. I'm the Chief Data Scientist at uh, Green Key Technologies. Um, and the, the title of my talk is, is around speech recognition for multi-channel communication networks uh, because that's something that I think a lot of us are seeing in a lot of businesses. Um, you know, WebRTC is definitely making a, uh, inroads in business settings, uh, but there's still a lot of communication that happens in hybrid networks, uh, and that poses some challenges for speech recognition that are some of the things we've been looking at at GreenKey. You know, so <clears throat> at GreenKey, we always ask ourselves uh, this question, you know, voice assistants are taking over a lot of homes. Uh, why aren't they taking over businesses? We've obviously seen uh, Alexa and uh, Google Home and, and now Apple uh, having their HomePod come inside of uh, consumer uh, settings, but you know, they haven't been able to make as many inroads uh, into business settings, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, for us, we look at this as, as saying that business conversations are both noisy uh, and distributed, and we'll unpack what that actually means and, and what, that actually, uh, what implications that has for speech recognition. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you're building a home assistant, um, you know, this could be any generic home assistant, uh, you can actually make uh, pretty reliable connections to your own cloud and uh, have cloud-hosted speech recognition. And so, you know, if you can use WebRTC for this, there's many other protocols as well to be able to send, you know, audio from that home assistant uh, to the cloud, uh, and you can get pretty good accuracy. You can get 95% accuracy uh, in speech recognition, um, and the audio quality is maintained as well because you're always maintaining control of the microphone. In a lot of business settings, uh, you don't get uh, as much luxury. So, you know, this is this is some of the this network resembles a lot of the networks that we look at, uh, where you might have a soft phone on your desktop, and this might uh, be using WebRTC, uh, and there you're still able to get that 16 to, to 44 kilohertz audio, um, you know, get nice crystal clear uh, audio, and be able to see speakers' um, faces even. Uh, for us, we actually um, have a cloud-hosted SIP server. Um, so we use SIP.js to be able to, uh, to have uh, that WebRTC traffic also have SIP packets and a SIP user agent. And that allows us to connect that with legacy telephony networks. Um, so we can use a SIP trunk and, and connect to a legacy telephony network that you might call from your, even from your mobile phone or a desk phone or in the financial industry from uh, this large ancient phone called a turret. And that audio is at uh, eight kilohertz. And um, you know, at, at first, uh, when people listen to 8 kilohertz audio versus, you know, 44 kilohertz audio, they'll be like, yeah, it sounds a little muddled, but I can still understand it. Uh, that's not the case for most uh, machine learning algorithms. For speech recognition, uh, you know, computers are basically modeling data off of bits, and uh, very simply, you know, the more information you have to describe a signal, uh, the better accuracy they get. And what ends up happening is that you have these multi-channel conversations, uh, and suddenly your speech recognition accuracy drops dramatically uh, down to around 60% accuracy. Once you're at 60% accuracy, that becomes much more useless. And uh, this is really a, a problem of disparate audio quality that leads to uh, poor speech recognition accuracy. And so this has been a problem uh, for a lot of networks where uh, you know, there's, there's an interest to put machine learning. Machine learning works well with WebRTC, but doesn't necessarily work uh, with a lot of these legacy uh, audio streams. And you know, how do you have a machine learning solution and a speech recognition solution that uh, can deal with this disparate environment? So uh, before you know, figuring out how we actually solve that problem, you know, it's helpful to understand how modern speech recognition works. Um, so you know, for, for most speech recognition, uh, you'll have uh, a training uh, process, and then you'll actually have your inference when your model goes into production. And for the training process, you usually take audio files and text. And this is the data that the uh, machine learning algorithm is going to learn from uh, to figure out you know, when it gets a new audio stream you know, what's, what the transcript should be. Um, you know, most, most machines can't actually take that audio and text directly, they do some sort of feature transformation. And there's a variety of feature transformations that are done, but basically this takes your audio file and your text and converts it into numbers. And numbers are something that uh, machines can actually learn off of. From there, um, you take the audio file numbers, uh, for lack of a, a better term, uh, to, to keep it simple, and uh, make that your input, and you input that into a neural network model, 
and the neural network model will produce some sort of output. And at first, you randomly initialize this, uh, but you compare that output to the target output from the numbers from your text, and uh, you then, uh, depending on how far off you are, you update your model. And the cycle happens uh, thousands of times, and you usually do this with thousands of hours of, of audio data with the uh, human-generated text transcripts to get uh, a, an appreciable accuracy model. So, you know, when you go uh, to actually use your model in production, um, the, uh, a very similar pipeline happens in that your audio, you know, doesn't normally get fed directly into your neural network. Uh, you have that same level of feature transformation, and that converts it into some numbers that the network expects, uh, and then it produces your output. And, you know, if you think about this, what, what that really means is that speech recognition models uh, expect audio features uh, to be similar to the audio features that they were trained on. So if you have a speech recognition model and you're trained on, you know, 44 kilohertz audio and, and, and uh, you know, without noise, when you actually go and try to use that model with lower quality audio, uh, it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't expect uh, that, um, you know, the features are going to be uh, basically four to five times less diverse in terms of bits. Uh, and this is where audio quality actually drops uh, significantly. Um, so, you know, in order to solve this problem uh, at GreenKey, you know, we, what we looked at is, is let's say, okay, we know that audio quality is, is a factor uh, in speech recognition, but you know, how much of a factor is it? And uh, so if you go through and you look at you know, high quality WebRTC streams, uh, down to SIP streams, down to telephony streams, uh, you can uh, pretty clearly see with modern speech recognition that accuracy goes down uh, pretty substantially. And again, this is because the audio features actually uh, differ between uh, these three regions. And um, you know, for telephony streams, uh, in the financial services industry, we're you know, very used to eight kilohertz. Uh, in emergency services for LMR radios, if you've ever listened to police audio, uh, it actually goes down to four kilohertz, so you can have some, some really, really compressed uh, audio streams there without a lot of data. And, uh, you know, so if, if you want to solve this problem, uh, you know, the first is, is identifying that there is an issue with, you know, audio quality and accuracy. Uh, the second is figuring out, okay, well, audio quality is a general term, you know, is it just the sample rate? What are the factors that actually affect uh, the speech recognition accuracy? And you know, it turns out there are several that are actually correlated pretty, pretty highly with, uh, with transcription accuracy. So the sampling rate is uh, one of the most common ones that, that's correlated. So this uh, means that the less samples you have in your audio stream, uh, when you actually do those feature transformations, those feature transformations uh, are basically approximating the audio, audio stream into, usually into frequency space. And uh, they have less data to work on. And so this, um, you know, sampling rate is a pretty direct factor. So if you reduce your sampling rate by half, uh, you'll see uh, a degradation in audio quality. Uh, the signal-to-noise ratio is also important. So the signal-to-noise ratio is, uh, you know, basically a, a factor of, of what the signal-to-noise ratio has been in your training data versus what uh, sort of signal-to-noise ratio you expect um, in, uh, you know, in a production setting. And the reason this is important is because audio files and audio uh, uh, training data has noise. And you don't want your, you know, you don't necessarily want your speech recognition engine to try to recognize everything as noise. You want it to ignore some level of background noise, uh, but you don't want it to, uh, you know, you also want it to be tolerant if there is some noise in the background. And so, you know, having uh, an idea of what that signal to noise ratio is uh, actually um, in your training data and how much that compares to production, uh, it seems to be pretty useful in terms of maximizing accuracy. Uh, another important factor is representation of human voice frequencies. So. Um, again, even though for us, you know, if you listen to eight kilohertz audio versus 44, it sounds pretty similar. Um, it's because, you know, there's, there's actually only a narrow frequency range uh, that, um, you know, that models the human voice in terms of all frequencies. And um, the, depending on how much the speech recognition engine has been trained on that representation, you know, that affects your uh, speech recognition accuracy as well. Clipping and distortion, uh, this is a, a pretty obvious one. Um, you know, if you clip your signal, that signal that the, the engine can't read off of, uh, and even loudness. So, you know, if the engine, uh, your speech recognition model was trained on very loud audio and then it's put into uh, very soft environments, it can actually, um, you know, have much lower accuracy than, than um, you know, the audio features it's used to. You know, so once you're able to actually define, you know, what these audio quality features are, then you can start to build models that uh, are less sensitive to a lot of these audio quality features. And, you know, you can imagine that uh, for uh, your signal-to-noise ratio, you know, you could take, you know, audio data and you could artificially add various levels of noise and so the engine would get some tolerance to it. Uh, you can add 
uh, various levels of loudness, and uh, the you know engine can get uh, tolerant to, to different levels of of, uh, of signal amplitude, uh, and that seems to help. But um, you know, but still, it's it's hard to sort of maximize and, and solve for all of these qualities in uh, in a single speech recognition model because some of these are going to vary so much from environment to environment. So in a room like this, you know, there's not a lot of background noise. Um, it's a pretty clear speech. Uh, you compare that to a financial trading floor, and in a financial trading floor, there's you know traders shouting in the background. Uh, there's a lot going on. You know, people are sometimes very close to their microphones, and you know it's 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 it becomes a monumental challenge to have a speech recognition engine that's going to uh, actually perform well in both of those environments. And so, you know, one of the approaches that uh, that we've started to take is to actually say, okay, well, you're not going to build one engine that's good for um, your uh, for every single audio environment. You know, why don't you build multiple engines and then you know use machine learning to figure out which one uh, is actually best. And so this is something that uh, we do. Um, you know, now in, in production, and, and we've started actually partnering with a lot of other uh, speech recognition engines uh, to, to leverage some of them, is that we'll, you'll have uh, transcription engines that uh, perform uh, well at different levels of audio quality. So you might have one that performs really well at high audio quality, clean speech. Uh, you know, maybe that's what you use for your WebRTC channels. Uh, you might have one that's trained on just you know, low quality telephony, traditional tra telephony audio. And um, in order to be able to leverage all of them, uh, you actually take your audio stream and you run uh, an audio quality classifier over it. And this can be something as simple as uh, just measuring some of the parameters that we talked about before, like signal to noise, mean amplitude, mean frequency, and then deciding in real time to send your audio to a different engine. Uh, or you can you know, use more advanced machine learning to figure out, um, you know, correlate different audio features with what maximizes accuracy. Uh, but the point is that you actually take an audio uh, stream uh, you end up transcribing it with various engines, and then you collect all of those together uh, to make a single final transcript. And um, this actually ends up being uh, fairly successful in terms of uh, you know how well it's able to uh, perform. So you know in this in this case, what we're doing is actually taking uh, a variety of models. So here we have four uh, transcription engines, and uh, you know there we give them a multi-channel uh, audio stream to actually transcribe. The multi-channel audio stream features uh, audio quality of different levels. Um, so some of it's WebRTC-based streams, some of it's telephony streams, uh, and we and they all you know perform anywhere from from 40% accuracy to uh, to about um, you know 75% accuracy. And it's important to note here that this this uh, graph is in word error rate. So this is the the error rate, the number of errors. Uh, so lower number is actually better. Uh, what happens is that you can start combining these models together and measuring the audio quality of your stream and just sending audio to different models uh, when you detect a change in audio quality. Uh, and by leveraging all four models together, uh, you're actually able to get uh, down to around 15% uh, word error rate or 85% accuracy. Uh, so by leveraging these models that have been trained on uh, various levels of audio quality, uh, you're actually able to um, get a very substantial uh, improvement in accuracy uh, overall. Of course, seeing is believing. So, so you know, here's an example of, of, of some of the stuff we've done in, in the financial services industry, where you can start to see this. So, what you'll hear here is uh, um, this is actually a, a stream off of a turret, and a turret is basically um, a, a multi-channel telephone uh, where um, you know you're, you might be a broker on a trading floor and you're just receiving quotes from people. So, you're trading all these instruments and you're receiving quotes, and you'll hear uh, how um, all of the audio streams actually have very different levels of audio quality, sometimes they're loud, sometimes they're soft. Uh, but by leveraging this approach of using multiple models, you're still actually able to get you know, very uh, high uh, audio or very high transcription accuracy. Let's see if this opens. So there you have it. So as you can see, you know, there's there's a there's various audio uh, qualities going on in that actual uh, stream. And um, you know, finally, it, you know, if you, if you listen to it, first of all, you know, people breathing into your microphone is hard enough for humans to listen to, uh, but it's actually pretty powerful to be able to have uh, this multi-engine approach uh, 
to be able to transcribe all of those uh, with high accuracy and, and do it in real time. There's a, you know, so now, you know, we've, we've not only done this in the financial industry, but, um, you know, there's a lot of application for this in uh, emergency services as well. It's another case where, um, again, you know, you might have a dispatcher who's, you know, maybe they're using uh, modern software now, maybe they're on a WebRTC based client, uh, so they have good audio quality, uh, but, you know, the far end could be off of, um, you know, any telephone uh, that's been basically bridged into that network. And again, you'll see these varying levels of audio quality and, and uh, the ability to actually uh, stabilize and have a, of a high accuracy transcript um, you know, across uh, the varying levels of, of these channels. It's a little soft, I don't know. But... So again, you can see there, you know, there's, there's um, varying levels of audio quality. Uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to hear actually the far end, um, but, you know, by having these engines that are trained on uh, varying levels and put them together, uh, you're actually able to get uh, pretty reasonable transcription accuracy. And especially in a situation like that, it uh, becomes much more helpful and you can actually get those, um, you know, Alexa-like skills of, of having addresses pop on the screen and, you know, having good transcription when, um, when a conversation is very hard to hear. So in conclusion, you know, business conversations are noisy and distributed, and this is something that, that has definitely held back you know, a lot of speech recognition uh, being implemented in a lot of these uh, real-time audio streams. Uh, but you know, what, what this really comes out to and, and some of the research we've done is that you know, speech recognition needs to be trained to understand uh, each unique audio environment. And having an ensemble engine that uh, combines those learnings across audio environments, uh, you're able to actually maintain that high level of speech recognition accuracy uh, and uh, deliver value in business settings. So with that, thank you. Tages. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, because uh, all of our front ends um, and all of our front end interfaces are all uh, been open sourced. Uh, and so, with that, uh, there's, there's sort of two components of that. One that allows them to, you know, use WebRTC to be able to uh, communicate uh, with uh, transcription engines. Uh, the second is that um, our, our switchboard product, which actually does uh, aggregate transcription engines, allows anybody, you know, any transcription engine provider to plug their engine in or plug their model in. So, you know, if you uh, are in an industry and you've started building a speech recognition model for, you know, a very particular audio environment, uh, you can just plug that in uh, and be able to leverage from uh, the community of other engines we have, uh, which include our own, um, as well as Microsoft and, and Digital Reasoning are uh, two of the other engines we use. And the last is we actually have a, a, an open source framework for uh, building voice skills uh, on top of that, right? So, um, you know, getting transcription is one thing, but being able to take that and interpret it uh, with um, pull out intense and entities, you know, that's that's really where a lot of the uh, the skill-like uh, behavior comes from. And, um, you know, that's something that's uh, open source through our discovery engine. So anybody can go and, and build, um, you know, their own interpreters and start to leverage some of the community uh, that we have as well that's been that's been building on top of that. So um, a lot of, a lot of uh, open source interfaces into various parts of that ecosystem. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs>